There's an underground PR firm that helps celebrities to fake their own death. Which conspiracy theory is so believable that it might be true? At the end of the video, there is a list of proven conspiracies. That your phone's microphone is constantly hot and it's listening for keywords to target advertising. Most glaring instance where this happened to me was when I walked into a colleague's office. He had just gotten a standing desk, but one that goes on top of his existing desk rather than a standalone, pun, model. That's important to note. I said nice standing desk, when did you get that? Thanks, just today. He replied. That was literally all that was said about the desk. We talked about work related stuff and as I walked out and checked my phone, there was an ad on Facebook for that exact model of standing desk. I have never owned one, wanted one, or googled one before. Yet there it was on my feed. Tin foil hat be damned, they listen in. Facebook purposely attempts to ruin people's relationships because the drama gets more views and more views sell more ads. Several years ago they introduced a feature so that your comments on other pages would show up in your friends feeds. So if you're secretly an atheist and you comment on some atheist page, it shows up in your devout Southern Baptist Grandma Muriel's timeline, even though it's a conversation that has nothing to do with her and there's no reason for it to be. As a result, Facebook outs you to your family, and Grandma is typing away at all the evil Satanists trying to corrupt her grandson. And if you comment on a public post, it's unavoidable. You used to be able to control who could see your comments even on public posts by other pages, but at the same time Facebook introduced their tattletale feature, they took that ability away. Now if they were to stumble across the same page they'd be able to see your comment, but after that change, Facebook started pointing everybody you know directly to it. Not to mention, the privacy settings are difficult to find, difficult to understand, and with each passing year gives you less and less control over who sees what. By forcibly combining everybody's social circles, Facebook is trying to generate conflict. They want to generate conflict because the conflict happens on Facebook, which means people logging onto Facebook more often and seeing more ads. They're essentially an internet tabloid except instead of showcasing the personal drama of celebrities for clicks and sales, they're doing it to you instead. Ever notice how the vast majority of family drama, relationship fights, etc. these days happens on Facebook? That's by design. Facebook is literally destroying the social fabric to make a buck. Consuming relationship stability like it's an oil refinery consuming crude. That Natasha Jayat was murdered by the Catholic Church for exposing a pedophile ring. Natasha Jayat, a model and TV journalist, exposed a pedophile ring on live Argentinian TV a few months ago, after following cases over the last few years. She had claimed that she would not commit suicide in April of 2018 while investigating these rings but was found on February 23, 2019 to be dead from suicide. Another journalist she had accused of pedophilia on the airing, Luis Ventura, had uploaded an image of her dead body shortly after she killed herself on Twitter, and then promptly deleted it afterwards. She supposedly died from a cocaine overdose, heart failure or stroke. She had said that if she wound up dead, the people she had accused of rape, she was on trial, and it was powerful people, would be guilty, I won't kill myself. I won't overdose and drown in a bathtub, I won't shoot myself. Dyson purposefully made the cable shorter over time just before announcing the cordless version. My DC-01 has a 12 meters flex. My DC-14 has a 6.5 meters flex. They purposefully made the flex shorter to be an inconvenience and make people want the cordless version. Memes about the NSA and other spy programs are encouraged by the very agencies spying on us to twist the idea into the absurd and to humanize their agents. Many people say it right now. You're not an important person, nobody cares what you're doing. They've fallen for the idea of individualized manual spying, conflated it with systematic automatic spying, and dismissed both as not worth worrying about. Miley Cyrus's crazy streak was all a carefully planned marketing scheme to get her solidified as an A-list celebrity. I also believe it was done to make Disney completely cut ties with her and kill the image of Hannah Montana. It worked too. Hannah Montana was quite possibly Disney's largest TV show ever, but I haven't seen anyone even mention it for over four years now, and despite Disney cashing in on old IPs, Aladdin, Kim Possible, Lion King etc., we have yet to even hear an unsubstantiated rumor regarding Hannah Montana. The Vatican holds horrible dark secrets and many answers to existential questions. The Vatican has many vaults literally stuffed with thousands of documents that no one but people in the Pope's circle have access to, who knows what's in those. 
I'm willing to bet there are parts of the Bible and Christian history that will never see the light of day, thanks to Emperor Constantine creating the first official canon of the Bible. Barack Obama may have been a CIA operative sometime in between college and being a community organizer in Chicago. Bear with me. After graduating from Columbia in 1983, Obama went to work for a company called Business International Corporation. A company that is known to have been used as a CIA front in the past. There is little information available about this time in Obama's life. The CIA was actively recruiting at that point in history and would have been very interested in a young black man with an Ivy League education and ties to Indonesia and Africa. The information would most likely still be classified, but it could also have helped his rapid accession in politics at such a young age. After nursing this theory for a while, I finally googled it and, sure enough, loads of websites showed similar theories. Some of it convincing. Not the stuff about him being a CIA chrononaut who fought Russians on the moon. That angle is less convincing. The president of the Philippines, Duterte, is very anti-drugs to hide his own involvements with drug cartels off which he makes billions. Funny enough, he once told supporters that, if his own children were found to be dealing in drugs, they should be executed. Not long after, one of his children was found to be involved with a big shipment of cocaine, if I remember correctly. Still alive. I may be shaky on some of the details here. But I remember reading this on Duterte's Wikipedia page. I'm at work, we'll find the source later if anyone is interested. The Laurel Canyon Conspiracy. Basically, if you look at the counterculture revolutionaries in the music industry in the 60s, most of them were the children of military intelligence people. So the theory is that the free love, lots of drugs movement they inspired was done intentionally to distract the youth from a full-scale revolution. The thought was if the angry youth of the mid to late 60s were too high and getting laid all the time they would stop caring as much about societal ills and then basically sleepwalk through the 70s, which they did. I stumbled upon this when I was reading up on Jim Morrison and how his father was the one who called in the fake strike at the Gulf of Tonkin that kicked off the Vietnam War, and which was shown later to have been a false flag. Turns out, a lot of his contemporaries were also children of highly placed military people with ties to intelligence. Strange that they all wound up in Laurel Canyon as part of the same movement. Denver International Airport, Secret Bunker, Giant Cult Shrine, and Potential Concentration Camp. There are a lot of conspiracy theories revolving around the Denver Airport. I'll try to touch on all the ones I know but forgive me if I miss a few. There's no doubt that there are some odd things about the airport, from the delayed construction to the massive cost to the odd choice of decorations. Opening on February 28, 1995, 16 months behind schedule and at double the cost of the original estimate, $4.8 billion, Denver International Airport is the largest airport in the U.S. by total land area. 33,531 acres. Not long after it opened, wild conspiracy theories began floating around. One major theory is that there is a massive underground bunker that was built for the world's elite in the event of an apocalyptical event. Another is that there is a massive facility underneath that was built to be used as a concentration camp in the future. Some people believe that the reason for the delay in the schedule was due to the construction of said underground bunkers and tunnels. Supposedly, a construction worker claims that they buried five multi-story buildings underneath and built the airport on top of it. Aside from the construction theories, there's plenty of things inside the airport that are just plain odd. One thing mentioned often is the large Mustang statue, shown above outside of the airport nicknamed Blucifer. A large blue horse with red eyes that supposedly represents one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, death. Oddly enough, the architect who designed the piece was killed when the horse's head fell on him severing major arteries and causing what proved to be fatal injuries. Another thing people find odd is the dedication stone inside the airport. One of the first things you notice is the large Freemasons symbol in the middle of the stone. Another thing people point to is the date on the stone March 19, 1994 which if you add up the numbers 191994, you get 33 which is a significant number in the Freemasons as I believe it is the highest level you can reach in the organization. The last odd thing about the dedication stone is that it says near the bottom New World Airport Commission contributors. People believe this is reference to the New World Order which will supposedly be brought on by the Freemasons or Illuminati. Also noted by conspiracy theorists are the four odd and slightly disturbing murals that are displayed in the airport. Some people believe these murals are packed with Freemason iconography and occult references and even are a telling of the future. The recommended food pyramid is created by the FDA, 
but the FDA is funded by a lot of certain food industries, poultry, dairy, etc. They in turn made the recommended nutrition based off of their funding by these companies, and not based on a well-balanced diet. The government experiments on the mentally insane because no one will believe someone with that kind of medical history. I feel like people overlook the fact that the government actually did experiments on Americans and messed at least one of them up so bad that he moved to the middle of the woods and started mailing bombs to people. The oil and coal industries invested heavily in killing off nuclear power as an attractive alternative. These days we have reactor designed many times safer than other methods of generating power, and the waste issue is something that could be fixed with sufficient investment. Even taking into account disasters like Chernobyl, estimated around 4,000 premature deaths, and Fukushima, 600, nuclear is incredibly safe compared to coal's 5,000 accidents per year. Nuclear kills 90 people per petawatt hour generated, whereas coal kills 100,000 people per petawatt hour, mainly because of lung problems worldwide. Even if we don't take into account the climate change contribution, most of those deaths are easily avoidable if we switch to nuclear. Multiple football World Cups have been influenced either by governments hosting them, or other entities out for their own gain. 2002 South Korea slash Japan and 1978 in Argentina are the two most obvious ones that come to mind. FIFA is absolutely the most corrupt organization in sports. Snapchat worked with the FBI to popularize, and secretly test and improve, face recognition technology. We went from wow, this is like magic to, this is totally normal in a few years and there's no way that the technology isn't being used by law enforcement. Have you read the terms and agreements of Snapchat? It's not a big secret that most social media is selling your information including the one we're using right now. I don't know if it's a conspiracy theory at this point. But a lot of people still don't acknowledge that your internet searches and social media profiles area absolutely being used as training models by major IT companies. I was a drunk college student and had access to them to run AI training, if you still think you're off the grid you're an idiot. Being frank, it's not a big deal if you don't have dark things to hide, those people are too busy building the new technological world to care that you look at midget porn. But don't delude yourself to think people don't have access to anything you do on the internet. The idea that genetic services like 23andMe may be selling records to the government and insurance companies. The most notable case is the Golden State Killer where they entered DNA recovered from the scenes and searched it for relatives. They found several distance relatives and used other information such as genealogical records, approximate age, and location of crimes to further narrow the suspect pool. Then based on that can get a warrant for a DNA sample. There's an underground PR firm that helps celebrities to fake their own death to escape the harshness of the limelight or if they feel like their life is in danger. For example Tupac, Biggie, Paul Walker, etc. Most likely a secluded island or possibly a remote country where you're not noticed. Might have changed your appearance. The families would obviously have to be kept out of the loop to maintain plausible deniability. You make a payment to the firm. They keep half and they give you cash when you reach your destination. Everything else is left to your family. That the world's 1% participate in a global human and sex trafficking ring that is untouchable by any law enforcement and often results in the deaths of any who dare expose it. This also extends into a larger world of high-profile crime that is hidden to the world. It is likely that celebrity suicides are often staged to cover up murders related to this secret world, those with a history of mental health issues are especially easy to cover up. The murders of Honey and Barry Sherman come to mind when speaking of this theory. They were a billionaire couple from Toronto, Canada, who were murdered in their home which had been staged to look like a murder-suicide. The police initially corroborated the story of a murder-suicide until after the children of the victims gave a public statement saying the police were wrong, stating it was instead a double homicide. Using a private investigator they revealed evidence in the crime scene that made it clear it was a double homicide. This raised questions as to why the official police statement said it was a murder-suicide. For example, both victims were found bound and a belt that did not belong to either of the victims was found around Barry's neck. Their murder happened in December 2017, and there has been very little information released about this case since. List of proven conspiracies Three members of Congress are demanding answers after a St. Louis scholar's new book revealed details of secret Cold War era U.S. government testing in which countless unsuspecting people, including many children, pregnant women and minorities, were fed, spread or injected with radiation and other dangerous materials. 
St. Louis leaders were told at the time that the government was testing a smokescreen that could shield the city from aerial observation in case of Soviet attack. Evidence now shows radioactive material, not just zinc cadmium sulfide, was part of that spraying, Martino Taylor said. Government tested AIDS drugs on foster kids. Children not provided with basic legal protection, review fines. Government-funded researchers tested AIDS drugs on hundreds of foster children over the past two decades. Often without providing them a basic protection afforded in federal law and required by some states, an Associated Press review has found. The research funded by the National Institutes of Health spanned the country. It was most widespread in the 1990s as foster care agencies sought treatments for their HIV-infected children that weren't yet available in the marketplace. The research was conducted in at least seven states, Illinois, Louisiana, Maryland, New York, North Carolina, Colorado and Texas, and involved more than four dozen different studies. The foster children ranged from infants to late teens, according to interviews and government records. The U.S. Army recently released logs of thousands of experiments conducted at Dugway Proving Ground dating back to the Cold War, providing a glimpse at what the highly secure testing facility has been up to. Some military tests involved human exposure to biological and chemical agents. They loaded up mosquitoes with what they said was an inert disease, an inert bacteria, an inert virus and actually released that on civilian populations in the United States, he said. Immediately after World War II, researchers at Vanderbilt University gave 829 pregnant mothers in Tennessee what they were told were vitamin drinks that would improve the health of their babies. The mixtures contained radioactive iron and the researchers were determining how fast the radioisotope crossed into the placenta. At least three children are known to have died from the experiments, from cancers and leukemia. The Imperial Japanese Army's notorious medical research team carried out secret human experiments regarded as some of the worst war crimes in history. Its scientists subjected more than 10,000 people per year to grotesque Joseph Mengele-style torture in the name of science, including captured Russian soldiers and downed American aircrews. The experiments included hanging people upside down until they choked, burying them alive, injecting air into their veins and placing them in high-pressure chambers. The Great Purge, also known as the Great Terror, was a brutal political campaign led by Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin to eliminate dissenting members of the Communist Party and anyone else he considered a threat. Although estimates vary, most experts believe at least 750,000 people were executed during the Great Purge, which took place between about 1936 and 1938. More than a million other people were sent to forced labor camps, known as gulags. This ruthless and bloody operation caused rampant terror throughout the USSR and impacted the country for many years. The deliberate starvation of millions in Ukraine in the spring of 1933, the Soviet Union was in the depths of a class war. Soviet leader Joseph Stalin had sent workers and communists from the cities to extract grain from the countryside. We realized, as one of them put it, that it was impossible for us to live on the same earth as these bloodsuckers. The suppression of private agriculture combined with unreasonable requisitions, caused millions to die that year in the Soviet Union. As the post San Applebaum reveals in Red Famine, Stalin and the Soviet leadership enforced policies that ensured that the disaster was worst in Ukraine. According to the latest work of demographers, some 3.9 million people died by starvation in that Soviet Republic. Until the Holocaust, the Great Famine in Soviet Ukraine was the largest policy of mass killing in Europe in the 20th century. Over the decades, the relationship between Hollywood and the military has served the needs of both sides, filmmakers gain access to equipment, locations, personnel and information that lend their productions authenticity, while the armed forces get some measure of control over how they're depicted. That's important not just for recruiting but also for guiding the behavior of current troops and appealing to the US taxpayers who foot the bills. National Cine Media, which sells ads in movie theaters, prepared the Army and 20th Century Fox for a marketing campaign designed to reach potential recruits. The campaign intercut footage from the Fox superhero movie X-Men, first class with images of real soldiers as a voiceover intoned, heroes, ordinary people who discover they can do extraordinary things. The spots played in cinemas, and exit polls of 17 to 24 year olds leaving the movie theater found that those who saw the ad were 25% more likely to say they would consider joining the Army. Volkswagen systematically cheated on U.S. air pollution tests as part of their clean diesel scheme by dynamically modifying car performance with software that turns on full pollution controls only during official testing, a scheme that is set to cost them $18 billion. Thanks for listening to Radio TTS. 
Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell for more videos. Click the right box for the conspiracy playlist. Find the list of proven conspiracies, including sources, linked in the video description. And don't forget to share your thoughts on these theories.